Faster 3D printing is something everyone wants to achieve, from hobbyists to people creating end-use products. With these quick tips, you'll learn how your 3D printer's construction, hotten, and extruder all play a part in the speeds that your 3D printer can reach, and how you can improve it. While you can get usable parts when 3D printing fast, you're more likely to find small blemishes in smooth sections or in areas of high detail on your 3D models that you're trying to print. At low speeds, skateboards are easy to handle, but pick up too much speed or head down too steep of a hill and it's easy to lose control. 3D printers are very similar, experiencing the same sort of speed wobble if the construction of the frame isn't rigid enough to support the high speeds you're trying to reach. 3D printers that move the bed back and forth will often have some sort of support beam to tie the gantry to the bed frame itself. This is because as the print is built up, it adds more weight to the bed and therefore more inertia. A rigid construction from frame to print head assembly means that ghosting and ringing artifacts are significantly mitigated. However, just a rigid frame isn't all it takes to have a fast 3D printer. You need to have stepper motors that can keep up without skipping steps. Your stepper motors need to have enough torques so that they can be moving at speed, stop, change direction, and speed up again, all in one smooth motion. Generally, the larger or longer a stepper motor is, the more torque it will have, although there are some brands of high quality stepper motors that can achieve higher speeds and more torque within the same form factor, and they can potentially be quieter as well. A big part of any change to the extrusion process is heat transference. Printing faster has similar considerations as changing the nozzle size of a 3D printer, because after all, in both situations, you're effectively changing the flow rate. Take for example changing from a 0.4mm nozzle to a 1.0mm nozzle. You need to either raise the temperature or slow down the 3D print. Because you're pushing more material out of the nozzle, you need to give the filament adequate time to heat up or you can add extra heat into the equation so that it extrudes at the right temperature. Even if the thermistor in the heater block reads 200 degrees Celsius at a high speed, PLA being extruded may only be able to reach 160 degrees Celsius before it needs to extrude, which means your layers aren't going to adhere together. It's possible that just printing PLA at high speeds means you need to bring the temperature up to 260 degrees Celsius so that by the time it leaves the nozzle, it's actually 200 degrees. It's also worth considering upgrading to a more powerful heater cartridge, like the Slice Engineering 50 watt heater cartridge, or you could just change your entire heater block altogether to something like the High Flow Slice Engineering Mosquito Magnum, the E3D Volcano, or the E3D Super Volcano. And with these, you may not even need to adjust temperatures at all to reach high speeds. All extruders are not created equal, and some just may not have the grip strength necessary to be able to push filament out at high speeds. Basic extruders sometimes have problems even at low speeds, so surely increasing the speed is just going to bring more problems. More advanced extruders will have a tension adjuster and a constrained filament path, which means that as the filament leaves the extruder gear, it immediately moves into a path where it can't go anywhere else except towards the hot end. If you intend to print flexible filaments at high speeds, then you need that constrained filament path because if you don't have it, it's just going to spit out the side and you're going to have an immediately failed print. Having dual drive gears in a gear ratio is a quick way to ensure that your extruder has enough torque to print at high speeds. The Bontech BMG, Bontech QR, and E3D Himera all have these features, which means that your point of failure is going to be the Bowden coupling on your hot end well before these extruders ever give up. With these tips in mind, you should have the knowledge necessary to dive deeper into high-speed 3D printing and see if your 3D printer has what it takes to print in minutes versus hours. The pseudo-standard speed of 40 millimeters per second is a respectable place to stay if you don't feel like dealing with all the fuss of high-speed 3D printing. But for those of us with a need for speed, you know what you need to do, and you can find all the upgrades you need at matterhackers.com. Do you already have a machine capable of high-speed 3D printing? I'd love to hear more about it in the comments down below. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Hey there, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that quick tip on high speed 3D printing. This is actually my white whale, and I think someday if I apply these tips, I might be able to reach 200 millimeters per second. If you want to read some in depth articles, you can go to matterhackers.com, or if you want to stay up to date with all of our digital manufacturing content, be sure to click subscribe. See you in the next one.